feels like a good fish. Took a little while to get them going though, but I always like to start with a fish. It's a good way to introduce a program. And today, I'm making a program about the pellet waggler. I'm at a lovely location, close to the small village of Doddington in Cambridgeshire. Just try and control this fish a bit. It's gone around the back by those rushes. That's it, come away. And I started by firing some six mil pellets out in the water. Now a pellet waggler, it sounds complicated, doesn't it? But I'm just gonna show you today how easy it is to use. It's just a float, hair rig pellet. You vary the depth a bit and I, and I set. It's a beautiful day today, probably, I don't know, probably already about 16 degrees. And I set the depth at about six foot. It's much deeper than that here, so I'm fishing sort of mid-water. Usually early morning, the fish take a little while to move and to stir. So you start deep and then maybe finish up as shallow as two or three foot, but we'll run through that as the day goes on. And for about 20 minutes, I was just firing three or four of these six mil pellets. Firing them out, plop, plop, make a little bit of noise, fish love noise, a reactor noise, or and, and, uh, and, and big double figures as well. This one feels just reasonable. Just feels like a good fish. They never come in easy. You can see the waggler there, and I'll go through that as well. The waggler is a special type of waggler developed just for this style of fishing. Let's get this fish in first, just to see what the what it is. You always anticipate. I've got the clutch set on the reel, just set. So I can control a fish. Oh, lovely. It's great, you know, when you catch your first one, you, you think, am I going to catch today? What's it going to be? What sort of fish will it be? You know it's going to be a carp, but what size will it be? Is it a mirror? Is it a common? Do fight, and they, 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 they are in very, very good condition here. That one, I just... I'd been feeding, I just threw out and, it, and the float sort of went straight away. It almost took it on the drop. Do you believe it? You know, it's so, you, you just can't. I'm putting as much pressure as I can. I'm using a rod that's been specially developed for this style of fishing. Clutch, just clicking a little bit. I've set the clutch so it just, I can back wind, but also, the clutch will just go if it really, if the fish really roars. So I've got a double safety net, really. Right, the fish is just coming in now. It's a good, they fight so hard here. Just hear the clutch, just a little bit going. Oh, it's a beautiful fish. Lovely one. Gorgeous one to start the day off with. Just see that big paddle of a tail coming out of the water then. Still that clutch is going. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Really good looking fish, this. As I say, they are in superb condition. And the first one safely in the net <laughs> to the pellet waggler. I know I'm going to have a good day. I always do whenever I come here. As I say, the fish are in fantastic condition. Just taking a hook just inside the mouth. Need to get my disgorger on there. And I'm leaving, you can either put the fish on an unhooking mat or leave it in the net. It's sometimes as well if you leave it in the net and then just put it back in the water. If you can do it without touching it, it's good if you're fishing. I love to show them to camera, so I'm going to try and... There. Yeah. I'll run through the rig and everything as well later on, but as I say, usually it's great to do an introduction and catch a fish as well. And you'll see what superb condition this fish is in. About five pound mirror carp. Let me just hold it up for camera. To be so careful with them because when they really see the light, they want to they want to move, but that's a beautiful fish. 
It really is. Got this dorsal fin up for me. That's a, a mirror carp, probably about five pound. Put it back in the net. And then the net into the water so it can go safely away. Doesn't want to go out of the net now, it thinks it's, it can hide in there. What a cracking star. The bait I'm using today is fairly simple. Just some six millimetre halibut, they're bait tech halibut pellets. Six millimetre because you've got to go a fair distance to feed, I'm, I'm probably fishing 30, 30 to 40 metres and, and these are fairly heavy so I can catapult them three or four around the float. So that's the feed pellet and usually about a kilo will do you for a session. And then I've got some, a couple of different makes of, of drilled eight mil pellets. These are for the hook, so they're drilled already, ready drilled, which is handy to have and they're both 8 mil. Some look slightly larger than the other, so I bought them just in case I want to go onto a bigger hook. And I'll maybe then go onto these larger. Some companies say they're 8 mil and they're, they're a bit bigger, a bit longer and, and, and different. So I can try two different ones. But they're pre drilled so that I can use a hair rig and then just a bait. Feeding with 6 mils and then 8 mils, the larger one on the hook you know, for the fish so it's sinking. Oh, there's a nice big juicy pellet there, I'll have that one. And it's always your, is the only one. The hook bait is the larger one. And it worked on that, on that fish at the, in the beginning. So I've got one already hair rigged on here. But I'll run through that again in a moment. Not a big, not a big hook, but a reasonable size and just hair rigged on and Sometimes you can catch two or three fish on the same pellet. And the cast is sort of just a steady cast. Make sure that when you cast, you, you trap, just as the, the float comes down, just trap the line with your finger to make sure the pellet, because there's no shot on that line at all, just a, a swivel, just to make sure the pellet goes past the float and doesn't tangle. Pick a mark on the far bank, then just a nice steady smooth cast, trap it with your finger just as it lands and then there's a little bit of wind today so I need to sink the line. You can either bury your, your, your tip under the water, just bury it and give a, a sharp flick like that usually does it. So then once your float's in position and, and pick a position with a marker so that you're going to keep, keep feeding in that same spot. In other words, if you cast your float all round, don't follow that. Make sure your feed is going in the same place all the time. And if you get a bad cast, just come back in and recast. And then sort of four or five of these pellets, just whiz them in the area of the float. They make a little bit of noise as they go in. Fish love noise. As they go, the fish will hear that. You'll be amazed. They know it's, there's food there. Of course, then they come up competing and looking. Now, my, my pellet at the moment is just suspended. About four, probably four foot below the surface. And that I will vary, as I said earlier, I'll vary it throughout the day, maybe go a bit deeper. And I'm looking for signs of the float moving. I'm looking for signs of the float suddenly, a little pull or a tug. Don't strike at that. You'll, sometimes it will just be the fish's body against your line. The float will go under. And you don't even need to strike because you've got a hair rig on. You need to just lift into the fish. But what will happen is the float will disappear and it will stay under. And usually your rod tip will go round except if the fish is coming towards you. But you'll see some indication of the line tightening. Or else the float will just stay under. But don't, if you see the float move, don't strike immediately at that. And you need to keep working at it, keep firing and then coming in. So four or five pellets, make that little bit of noise, look for the reaction from the fish. Don't leave it out there too long though. If you see your float moving out of position a little bit with the wind, then come in, recast. 
really is a very pleasant day for fishing today. It's getting on for late spring, so, and the water, about two weeks ago, we had a really warm spell where the water warmed up. Then it cooled down a bit, but it was enough to get the fish up in the water. It's not really a winter method, this one. It's more sort of spring and summer. I'm just gonna come in again and, and recast that. Nice, simple method, this to fish. Just recast. These, these wagglers also are specially designed to make a splash as they go in. As they go in and make a splash, a nice loud splash, of course that can attract the fish. Fish love, they react always to noise. So it's a matter of, and it's, oh there it goes, it's gone, one's on. <laughs> See what I said about them reacting to noise? The float just shot away and I'm in. That's what it's like, it's feeding. I've got the anti-reverse on, I'm going to flick that off now. It's a matter of feeding and then that splash, that fish heard that splash as soon as it hit the water and it was away. And I'll go in depth to the, to the floats later on as well when I go through the tackle. That's how easy it is though, the fish hooked itself. It really is a terrific way to fish. And you know it's going to be a goodish, goodish carp. And the rod I'm using today is uh, it's a proto prototype. It's been designed by Fox International and it's, it, it's for the, the Fox Match Division. It's a Warrior 11 foot pellet feeder rod, so it's specially designed. You can see that rod tip. It's not a, it's not a fine waggler, it's got a good sized tip in there, powerful tip to handle these carp. But it's an ultra light rod really is it feels just perfect beautiful curve in the rod feels like a big fish this one. Oh dear I mean it's all action really had that first fish and then just feeding again a few more pellets I was chatting about how to feed and how the waggler made a splash and then away it went oh. As I said, I've got the anti-reverse off now on the reel. The clutch, clutch is there. And the reel itself is designed for carp fishing. It's a Strata 7000. It's got the, the free running bait facility on it. So if you want to free spool, you can, but I don't use it for this, but it's got a nice big spool. You can see the line is right. I've got the line filled right up on the spool. These reels come with those, I quite often find that, that carp reels are they're too deep in the spool, but these ones come with special, special shallow spool attachment. You just clip it on and then you can probably get 150 meters of, of good quality line on it and it fills the spool up. You don't want, the, the thing is when you're fishing a waggle, you can't have too heavy a line and I've got sort of, this is 020 millimetre line which is about six or seven pounds so it's nice and strong. Oh, this fish doesn't want to come in does it? <laughs> lovely. You can see that lovely curve on that rod. Arched round. They really do fight well here. I don't know what the owner does to the fish but they're really well looked after. In this lake here, they don't use keep nets, so the fish are put back immediately. Which sometimes is, you know, to put big carp in a keep net is not good. Especially if they're double figure fish. You can put them in a sack, sometimes that's okay, they keep still, but... Almost close to netting it now, but that was... That was an instant reaction and I'd shallowed up a little bit from that earlier fish, not much, but I thought the fish were coming up. It's another mirror. <laughs> Looks really fat, fat, fit fish this is. Oh, this rod is perfect. It's, it's the first time I've used it. It's the only one in the country. It's the first time I've used it for this fishing and it feels perfect. The best I've used for this style of fishing. Oh, yeah. I think I'm lucky with this fish, I think I've still got my pellet. 
<laughs> means you don't have to bait up again, you can cast straight out and away. Oh, another lovely big, big mirror. Almost a leather, it's hardly got any scales on it. Now I just knocked the pellet out as it came up out of the water. It means I've got to bait up again. Let's just try and keep it still. It's only just lip hooked, so that's fine. It's fighting as much in the net as it was in the water as well. Now the hook's just pulled out. I'm using barbless hooks, of course you have to. That's one of the rules of the fishery, but it's better anyway for the fish. Once again, a lovely quality fish, sort of. It looks like a, almost like a greyish, got a greyish tinge to it. So if I can lift it up, I'll keep my net under it so I can lift it up and show it to you. But it really wants, really wants to fight this one. They're often like this, a fish. Wants to fight more when it's out of the water. Just have to matter of just keeping it calm. Kept my net underneath it so that I mess myself up a bit as I tack it into me. Just caught there, there. Be as careful and as quick as I can. There. Beautiful, superb condition fish. That's great. Took that pellet, so, so that was perfect, perfect timing. As the waggler splashed on the water, it heard it and sort of reacted to it and took it. There. Terrific fight as well. Safely away. Let me explain exactly how to set up a pellet waggler, how to do the, the bottom tackle and also talk about the wagglers themselves because this is the one that I'm using today which is, it's made by a local firm, Premier Floats and designed also by them and this is, this particular one is, is called a, a splash pellet waggler. You can see by the, the shape of the bottom as it hits the water it makes a lot of noise. And this is what attracts a carp. And then you've got the mushroom at the top, so it's a splash mushroom, is, is the part that the fish hook themselves. That last fish, the, the waggler went in. As the fish went to take it, you've got the resistance offered there to, as the fish pulls, to just, bec because you're using a hair rig, it doesn't take much, but it just hooks itself. So the mushroom hooks the fish and the splash attracts it, so it's a, a splash mushroom pellet waggler. But there's various sorts and they come in various sizes. This one's a number three. If you get windy conditions, the wind coming in towards you, you need a heavier one. If you've got the wind behind you, you don't need to fish too far, then you can use this particular one's a number two, but they, they do number ones. and So they just vary in weight, that's all. Then you've got a normal, this one is a normal one. This one was, I was using these last year. This one is just a mushroom pellet waggler. Hasn't got the splash to it but it's got the, the self hooking so it's a straight body with the self hooking and that works very well. And then you've got just straight ones as well. These are unloaded. Straight so you can, you can, you can put shots either side of the float on those to make the splash. So they're completely unloaded but you have to load them either side. I prefer the loaded ones. They're easier to use, they're more simple. So what you need is a uh, these also are special attachments because you haven't, you don't need, because it's loaded, you don't need shot either, either side of the float. Shot can weaken line, so you can use a waggler attachment, a couple of silicon sleeves, there's a few in there, made by the same company as well, made by Premier Floats. There's not, not many companies do these. There's a couple of bits of silicon. So to begin with, you need to, to just thread the silicon on the line. Remember I was using 020, which is seven or eight pound line, 
a quite thick line. Just thread that on the line. And the attachment just clips onto the silicon. It's very simple. So of course you don't get any wear on the line. That's why I like to use them. And if you want to change the waggler midway through a session, you think, oh, I need a heavier one. You can just do that. Just clips on either side. It's good quality silicon, so it will, will hold. So that, then all you need to do is just, I won't clip the waggler on yet, because what I'll do first is just use a small swivel. Let's see, I've got my old, what I've done is completely cut down my old rig. Just take the swivel off of that. Just to show you how to do the new one. And, and what knots to tie as well. So I've got a small swivel attaching, that's to attach the hook length to. Normal barrel swivel, probably about a size 24, something like that. And you need to do a tucked half blood knot. That's where you take the line round, say about five times, to so twist it five times, you put it through, put it through that, that loop there, like that, that's, that's then a blood knot, but then you need to tuck it, so you need to, to bring this piece here back through, if you don't tuck it, it will slip. Just put it through, wet it, and just pull it tight. Pull on the tag a little bit. I use my teeth a lot for that, and then just feel it, just make sure that it doesn't slip. Trim it off, leave a little bit, but not too much, just leave a little bit. Something like that. And then the hook, well I'm using, these are the hooks I'm using, which are, these are, they're, they're ready hair rigged. They're a Fox, Fox Match barbless corn hair rig, but I find they're perfect. It says an 18, but really it's more like a 16 or a 14. It's quite a big hook. But the hair rig size is perfect for an eight mil pellet. So it's already hair rigged. I use them already done as well, it's so easy. And use, just use the same knot to attach that. There's a loop on that hair rig on the, on the uh, attachment end, I'll just cut that off. And then the same knot, a tucked half blood. Like that, just twist it round. There's a few aeroplanes about today, I don't know where the nearest airfield is. But there's one or two whizzing about today. Just a tucked half blood where you push it through, twist it round, make sure you tuck it, and then make sure you feel that it's, when you've done it, sort of pull on it, make sure that it's tight and that it doesn't slip. You can check it, just really pull it, just to make sure it won't slip. Very, very neat. It's as simple as that. So you've just got this float attachment, you've got a small swivel with a tucked half blood knot on each, down to the hook, which is a size 18. You can just see the tiny hair on there. They're very, very neatly well done. You can't do them as well yourself. You might as well go and buy them ready done. And then all you need to do is just clip your float. Let's say we, we're using this big float. Just clip it on the swivel and then adjust the depth as you think. Oh, I just, just looked out and saw a big carp swirling where I've been feeding. Just clip the swivel on. And I was fishing probably something like about four foot. I think I had that last fish. It's as easy as that. Now you need to, to put one of these pre-drilled pellets on the hook, and I've got some big ones and some small ones. So, so I've got two different sizes there. Look, this, I'm looking for a smallish, we just started the session, so I'm looking for a smallish pellet. You need a baiting needle just to put through. So you put your thread your pellet onto the needle. And then, 
to get your hook and just put your baiting needle, there's a small loop on the hook there, just put your baiting needle through that. You'll find then that the pellet will, will slip down onto the hook and it leaves a very, very small, it wants to be small really, leaves a very small loop. Can you just see it, that very small loop there which you need to then this is really fiddly, especially for me, I've got big hands, just to push through there, like that, just to push through, and it's sort of a, a diamond shape there, and then the line, the, the loop of your line will thread around there, that will pull in, can't come off, and if I hold this up the other way for you, you can see I like to have the just a very, very short hair where the, the top of the hook almost touches the top of the pellet there. And a small hook as well. Fish are coming up in the water. They can see a big hook, so if you, you can try a big hook, but if you don't get bites, then go small. Or I, I think it's always best to start small and then go larger. Or if you lose one or two fish, then maybe go to a larger hook. But that's a good combination. It says it's a size 18 hook, but it's more like a 16 or a 14. I don't know where manufacturers get these hook sizes from. They all seem to vary. And then it's just a matter of casting out all the time. I've set that now. I've just pulled that down to probably about three foot deep, something like that. And a nice cast out. Remember to try and cast in the same place. Just put your finger on the spool as it, just before it lands, just to make sure that the pellet goes past. Are there any fish? I haven't fed for a little while, so there's probably, probably no fish out there at the moment. Or they are out there, but what happens is they just drop down through the water. So now, we have to try and bring them up again. So three or four pellets, not too many. If you start to fire a load of pellets, say if I fired 20 or 30 pellets, the fish would follow them down. They wouldn't be competing. They would follow them down, go to the bottom, but we want, we want the fish up in the water. Up in the water means little, feeding very small amounts, but very, very often. So rather than one big pouch full of pellets, it's better to put three or four in and just keep, I mean you don't have to hold the rod, you don't have to do anything, the rod is resting on my knee, it's on the rod rest, I've got it at a slight angle as well to the, to where I'm fishing so that it will pull round, it gives us a chance, I'm not pointing it directly at where I'm fishing, so I can, if I don't see the float I'll probably see the rod go out of the corner of my eye. And then it's a matter of just working these fish back up. And it's all about feeding. Just feeding, getting the fish competing for food. I love these. These are six mil halibut. Quite an oily pellet, but the fish love them. Catch almost any species on this method, but it's best for carp because they're very, very aggressive feeders. Just feed and fish and once, and you can if you want, just, just feed a few and then just leave it. Just leave it for a little while. Sometimes they'll take all the free offerings and then they'll look around and yours is the only one there and then they'll take that. So I experiment a little bit with the feeding but I don't leave it too long before feeding again. So little and often and then come in and cast out and now just wait and the float just went then, just, just went under and then just wait for it so we know there's a fish there for that to go. And it's gone. Oh, that didn't take long. Oh, it's incredible. Oh. Shot away, then it came roaring towards me. I flicked the anti reverse off already. It's nice and smooth. Usually the, the fish roar away, sometimes they come towards you, but once they realise things are happening, then they start to fight well. 
really am impressed with this rod. Perfect for this. Lots of power, but still soft enough to cast that, that float. Sometimes you need, you know, you need a really soft rod to cast a distance, but then you need a bit of power to control a fish, so this seems to be perfectly placed between the two. lovely just to catch fish. Now shallowed up a little bit more, you know, done that re redone that rig, shallowed up a little bit more and he's working good. Just the sun's just gone in there for a little while but it's still very warm, I'm only in shirt sleeve. It's not red hot but it doesn't need to be boiling hot for fish to come up, you know. Once they start to compete for food, then they come up in the water and fire in four or five pellets. And what happens is, the fish, it's really starting to fight now. The fish, if they're going to eat, if there's a few of them competing for food and they want to eat, they've got to come up in the water. If they don't get up to that food first, someone else has it. So that's what brings them up. It's the competition for food that brings them up and keeps them up. So. As soon as you can, once you get the fish in, you've got to start feeding again, get, get them back again. Sometimes they'll stay there. It's this, this one just found out he's hooked. <laughs> that rod is, really is, I keep on about it, it's perfect. If you look at the way that I'm, I'm playing the fish, if you look at my arm, you'll notice that it's part of the rod. It lays, Along the rod there, that, that, so the rod is part and your arm are all together and that's where you get your power from. You can hold that as long as you want. Hold it. When you want to stop the fish, you just, if you put your finger on the bail arm, just at the front there, you can stop the fish. And then when you want to wind, just release your finger off. I like to have the anti-reverse off just in case the fish, the clutch should work, but it's good, you know, in normal carp anglers, specimen carp anglers, fish for big fish, and they've got big hooks, so the clutch is, can be quite effective, but I've only got a smallish hook on here, so don't always rely just on the clutch. If it really goes, I've got a fish right underneath us now. If it really goes, then I like to also have the added protection of being able to reverse the reel. Perfect, lovely fish. Once again, I can see the, the pellet out of its mouth. Oh, a little bit larger than those last two, I think. Good fish. They're getting bigger, that's a good sign. That's a cracking fish. Oh, that's probably seven or eight pounds, that one. That is a big fish. Oh, beautiful. Flicking round a bit in the net, so I'll keep him in the net. That, once again, it's hardly got any scales. Almost a leather, a leather carp. It's funny how you get strange, how you get a strain of fish in a lake. And the, 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 in here, there is a particular strain, probably how they were stocked. Really is jumping about, this one. You just try and unhook the pellet while it's in the net. The hook, I mean. Maybe need to get my disgorger on that. Try to keep it in the net itself so that it doesn't... That's it. <laughs> Look, I've still got the... Still got the pellet on there. I'll leave that on there for next time. Can I show this one to the camera? This is a... This is a good, good fish. A mirror carp again. Hardly, hardly any scales on it. It's almost a leather. And really wants to fight now. Really sh probably should put this on my... There, come on. Just let me show you to camera for a little while. Lovely bluish grey hue. Look at that tail. Orange tinged at the, tinged at the end. 
perfect condition. Look at the eyes, beautiful fish. Really hard fighting. Fabulous fight. Just terrific, terrific fishing. That's a good fish, probably about eight pounds that one. Oh. Just getting back. None of them like to come out of the net, do they? Go on, away you go. There. It's gone. That was great, it worked ever so well and my pellet's still on so I can go straight out again. Hopefully catch another one. Nice, try to keep the car smooth. Always remember just to trap your finger on that spool just as it lands. Sink the line. And be watchful as soon as it goes in because you get that the splash of the waggler going in the water attracts the fish. It's just, to them, it's like a, a massive pellet hitting the water. But they, fish just, when they hear a noise, they, they, they relate it to food. Anything noise, anything a bit different, they relate to food and of course, the splash of a waggler is, is to them is food. So immediately they hear the splash, they turn and come looking. That's why I don't leave the float in too long. If you, Feed for a while, look for signs, and then come back in and, and let the waggler splash again. But you notice all the time, four or five pellets. Just try and, sometimes the wind blows them a bit, but get them in the float, roughly in the float area. The fish will move about a bit looking for them. They're nice heavy pellets, so. Wind really is changing a lot today. I can hear those pellets going in from here and so the fish of course can hear them quite easily. And they react to it. That wasn't a fish pulling my rod off the rest. It's got it rested on my knee a little bit. I'm going to do this a few times and then come in. looking for signs of fish and usually see an odd swirl or the float will, will go under and then come up again. But just keep feeding. You're not looking for a massive amount of fish, but you know, in a day's, a good day's session, you could have as many, probably as a dozen. On a, on a good day, perhaps 20. On a bad day, only five or six, but you will always catch something. I'm going to come in again now. Just come in and straight out. It's a good idea to check anyway to make sure everything's okay and it all looks okay. Depth's right, pellet's still on. Maybe they've gone a bit deeper, so but I'll try again at this depth and then, then just see. Nice. Cast out a bit, just a little bit beyond where you're feeding. Quite often the fish will hang back, but they hear that noise and they'll, they'll take it. You need to cast a little bit beyond when you've got to sink the line because you're pulling back into your feed area. And then just keep, as long as you pick a marker on the far bank and then keep casting your float to that and then feeding around your float, then you'll be feeding in the, in, the, in the same area. You're keeping the feed going in that fairly tight area. It can't, it can't be perfect because the wind blows the pellets a little bit, but you can keep it reasonably tight. You can imagine the fish circling around anyway. They can't all be on a sixpence. Big carp, if there's 20 or 30 big carp there, they want some room to move. So. So don't worry about keeping it too tight. Just, yeah, all the float went then. <laughs> I fired some pellets in the float bubbled, but it didn't take it, so it could have just been hitting the line. It could have been a fish 
just smacking against the pellet and then rejecting it immediately. You can never tell what it's going to be. It's all visual this, you're looking all the time at the float. And if you watch when I feed, I really just put my hand into the bowl here. Just put my hand into the bowl, take three or four pellets. I'm looking at the float all the time. Put them into the pouch, the float's gone. Is it still gone? And the line's going and the fish is on. <laughs> Didn't strike straight away then. Clutch just started to go. That was a perfect example. Just float went, but I didn't grab for the float, made sure it stayed under, then just picked the rod up. Remember, you're on a hair rig, so you don't have to strike through your bait. The hook is completely free of any bait. And it's a barbless hook. Ooh, the clutch went then. Just get my anti reverse off now, just to give me that bit of, of extra pressure. Let the rod absorb the fish itself. So you keep the rod up so that the, it will absorb the power of the fish. It's a rod that you use to cushion those sudden runs. If it was a dead stiff like a poker, you could break off straight away. And then you can put a little bit of side strain on the fish. It feels like a really good fish, this one. I really am so impressed with this rod. Fantastic. Not quite sure what we're going to call it yet, but it's uh, it's 11 foot long so that when you get the fish under your feet, they're easier to land. Nice and ultra light to hold. Of course, you're casting usually a good size waggler with this, so you don't need a long rod and you're fishing fairly shallow. Quite often long waggler rods are long because you're fishing 10 foot deep, 12 foot deep. If you're fishing fairly shallow, a short rod is fine. Gives you more control on the fish. Just notice how I backwind, I come in, I pump the fish. Don't wind the fish, just pump the fish, feel it. When you feel it coming towards you, then you can start to wind, but put the rod to the fish. You don't directly wind the fish in. When, when that fish first goes, let it run. Don't get hold of, I see so many anglers when they get a bite, Immediately start to try and wind the fish in and then of course it comes off. Let the fish run, take your time. Does it enjoy the pleasure of playing the fish? Don't try and wind it in in two seconds. Just feel the power of the fish and enjoy it. Oh, this feels like, yeah, it's a, they're all, they are very, very good quality fish in here in exceptional condition. It's a, just a gorgeous day for fishing today as well. Sun's going in and out a bit, but it's, it's still perfect condition. Just a very light wind. Fish are up in the water, taking those pellets. It really is. But you can't mind them. There's so much power. You can't mind the fish straight in. Just getting it to the top. You have of course got quite a bit of control, the rod's fairly powerful so I've got a fair bit of control over the fish. Just letting it just tire it out. Make sure you keep that arc in the rod. Never point the rod directly at the fish. Keep, keep, the, keep the rod up, keep the arc in the rod. This is a cracking fish again. Ah, oh, looks like I've got my pellet back, whether it will come off or not. Well I've had to catch three fish on the same pellet. Just, just caught a glimpse of the fish's mouth then, and it... Oh, that's a lovely one. Just another one of these mirror carp with very, very few scales. God. That rod is bent right over. Got my finger on the spool, and it's, it really is. It's really giving it some power. Oh, that's why we love carp. They do fight well. <laughs> Hooked in, only hooked in the lip, perfectly hooked. This is the biggest one of the day. The crabs are getting bigger and bigger, aren't they? Now oh, the hook's come out. The hook's just slipped out of his mouth. Look, the hook's just slipped out of his mouth. Look, and the pellet, I'll let's hold it up for you. 
Well, I can't keep it still, but the pellet's come off. No, it isn't. Pellet's still on. So it just came out because of barbless hooks. This is a lovely big fish. Shall we take it up on the unhooking mat and I can really show you what it's like? Oh, what a beautiful fish. All power, probably about seven pounds, but can you see just one or two scales on the back? It is a mirror carp, but almost a leather. And it's good if you can unhook them, if you've got a big fish to unhook them on a mat. But look at that, he's got a slight little crease in the top of his tail as well. A bit unusual, but really st we still didn't alter its power. It was a really terrific fight, that one. Perfect fish, lovely condition, and real hard fighting. I'll put him back in the water. I've, I've kept him in the net most of the time. I can just slip him back. Big fish. Lovely. And safely away. Looking for the cover of the reeds it went. Now it's running along. It's just, just there on the surface, look. I think, I wonder what just happened to me. But safely back in and it won't, they, they, they probably won't feed again today, but they don't usually take long before they start. And I think I still had my pellet on, didn't I? Again, so we could catch three fish on this pellet. Yeah, it's still on. <laughs> Let's go straight out there again. Now I've been chatting a bit and come in, so maybe it may take a little bit of time to get the fish there again. Remember what I said, how you have to feed, get them coming up, make sure that you've got I just had my anti reverse off, so I've flicked it back on again now. I like to leave it on. It just, if you haven't got hold of the reel, it just tensions up enough then if the fish take. My smooth cast. Sink the line. Lovely. And then just, once it's out there, then I can start to feed. And it probably will take a little bit of time, but this is, this is what happens in fishing. You know, you, you unhook the fish, you might have a cup of tea, you might chat to somebody, but once you get out of there, you've got to start the process again of this just feeding all the time. Feeding a bit of feed and then a cast. It's funny, when, if, you, if you haven't fed, there's no signs, and then as soon as you start to feed a little bit, I hear that, just that noise of the, of the bait going in, and they seem to respond to it. And you find what happens is also, as the day progresses, as you feed and, and continue more and more, then you get more and more fish arrive and compete, and they don't, they then usually don't leave you. You can sort of quite often catch them straight away. They will, they will hang around a bit longer, but at the moment, carp are quite greedy, you know, once you stop feeding, they, they lose interest. Couldn't just, I'm gonna come in again now and, and recast. You couldn't just cast out and catch one. It doesn't work like that. Notice that the float, it's a brilliant float, doesn't tangle at all, the attachment's working well. Just got that swivel down below to attach the line and the hook length. And sink the line. Good hard flick, get it sunk below the surface. Stop it drifting. If, it, if the float's drifting too much, the fish are aware of that. If they're sitting out there and a the pellet's flying through the water at an angle too fast, then the fish will know that. If it's drifting slightly, it doesn't matter, but they soon become aware of something strange happening. You, what you want is one or two fish around bashing against the line and the pellet, making it move, that helps. You know, if a fish, one fish brushes against the line and the pellet moves, another one might grab it. 
Another one on. It's non-stop action. Just a little bit of feed around the float and away it goes. You don't even have to strike, just pick the rod up. Flick off the anti-reverse. And then play the fish nice and steadily. At first, they, I, I don't think they know they're hooked at first. And once you get them in close, then they really start to fight. This one's come right towards me. It's going to start to go in a minute. Just feel the weight of the fish now. Now it, it realises it's been hooked. The sun's out now. It really is beautiful. They said it was only going to be about 16 degrees today, but sure, it's much, much warmer than that. Well, I think we've only got about time for this fish. This will probably be the last fish of the program. You can only catch so many fish in an hour. Letting that back wind work now as the fish runs away. And it, try to keep in touch. Sometimes they'll come right towards you quickly. And then you have to, the main thing is you've got a barbless hook so you keep the tension on the line all the time if you can. It's only when the line goes slack that they can shed the hook. Quite often when you've netted the fish, get it in the net, the hook comes out because the line is slack. As long as you keep that tension on. Reel is ultra smooth, but powerful enough to handle these fish. It's like a big, I use this same reel for my normal feeder fishing. I love it normal feet because it's got so much power and so smooth 15 ball bearings ultra quiet ultra smooth but the clutch is at the front any any adjustable clutch if it's at the front of the reel is always much better than a rear than the rear clutch I can't get this fish in is it gonna be the biggest one of the day I'm not sure just really you know, people look and they think, well, why doesn't he just pull it in? But you can't. Really surging this fish. <sighs> Trying to keep it away from them rushes. Clutch, even the clutch came in then, so I can tell it's a good fish. Just felt the clutch just click round. That's all you want. It doesn't want to whir around quickly. Just, just enough to stop the fish. The hook length I've got on here is 0.16 millimetre, so probably about four, four or five pound breaking strain. I can't be too brutal with the fish. But it's a nice high tech line, clear line. So the fish can't see it. High tech line is a pre-stretch line. It means you get much stronger line for its diameter. Oh, I can't get it in. Last fish of the day, and I can't get it in. Really putting some power, and this rod is a powerful rod as well. It's just, it's not a normal waggler rod. Probably about a one pound test curve, I should think. So it's not a normal light waggler rod. As I said, it makes it, it's not as good for casting floats, but it's brilliant for playing fish. And when you're fishing a pellet waggler, that's all you're doing most of the day, just playing the fish. And the pellet, the splash waggler themselves, you see how well they've worked today. The noise of the and the splash it makes as it goes in. And just using that adapter on the line so there's no weak links, haven't got shot either side of the line, that really helps just helps you to be more efficient at what you're doing. You don't want to lose fish. You don't want to break off on fish. How often do you hear people say, oh, I lost a big one. But it's usually just down to, to badly tied knots or just a weak link on the terminal tackle. And there is no weak link on this. We've got a nice, strong reel line, smooth reel, strong rod, powerful rod. 
don't know what this fish is. It's so, just came in so easily at first and now I just can't, can't get its head up. I just think they're good, hard fighting fish. Oh. Putting a lot of pressure on it. As I said earlier though, it's a smallish hook, so have to be a little bit careful. Can't, I don't like dragging fish out anyway. I love to play fish properly. You think of the biggest one of the day. Got real, real control over this fish, but it just won't. Oh, it is a big fish. It is a big fish. It's a beauty. Oh, oh it is a beautiful fish. I could see it sort of look more orangey. The other fish I've caught today are a little bit more grey, bluish grey in colour. This one's just an orangey. Orangey colour. Clutch is coming in again and I can't land the fish. Putting so much power on it. But what will happen is as the day goes on, usually you'll find you'll catch bigger and bigger fish. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic fishing. So much fun. Just when you know that the way, because you've fed right, because you're using the right floats, the right lines, and you can capture this sort of fish. Just see the pellet again. That is a, oh, definitely the biggest fish of the day. Beautiful, big mirror carp. But an orangey colored one, apart from the others which have been sort of slightly gray. This is more orange and, oh, beautiful. That is the most beautiful fish. Just unhook that again. You can see the, the pellet is still on. But this has got to be the last fish of the day. We've got no more time. Look at the orange on the back of this fish. Can I pick it up for camera? I hope so. I hope I can pick it up just for camera. Just to hold it and look at that. Probably seven or eight pounds. What a fight. What a beautiful fish. What a fabulous day's fishing at Field Ends Water on the Pellet Waggler. <laughs>